Hello and welcome to Relaxation for Stress and Panic Attacks. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I haven't done one of these recordings for quite some time. I've got got quite a few different podcasts, but uh, this particular podcast, Relaxation for Stress and Panic Attacks, there's 230 different recordings. And some of them are long, some of them are quite short. Uh, there's different relaxation techniques, stress reduction, ideas. Um, so this is just another one of those, really. Just let you know that my website's jasonnewland.com. If I haven't said that already, I probably have. I've got quite a few different podcasts as well. Uh, Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis is one. Um, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Stress and Pain Relief. Chronic Pain Relief Hypnosis. Bedtime Story Time. Um, Yeah, lots of different ones. Sleepy Boring Objects. Stop Smoking. So there's quite a few. Uh, You can see them all on my website anyway. So this is going to be an exercise. And it really is, it's, it's something to test out, not to take my word for it. It's something to actually try, try it for yourself because that's the only way you're going to know, uh, the benefits that you will gain from this very, very simple idea. I mean, it's proper simple. It has to be, because I don't deal with complications, if I can help it. So, what this is, is quickly counting down from 10 down to 1. You could do 20 down to 1, but I think 10 to 1 is just a little bit easier. Um, Although 20 down to 1 is not difficult either, is it? Now, the idea of this is, if you're in a a state of mind of anxiety, panic, you know, really extreme stress, then what, what you need is to calm down, obviously. Now... One of the problems I, I have or have had in the past, because I've I have uh, experienced a lot of anxiety and panic attacks over the years, uh, used to be used to be used to dominate my life. In fact, in the past, and not now. So, con- a lot. I went on, you know, I studied or bought books, tried to find out different ways to calm myself down, um, learned to meditate, uh, as well as already, you know, knowing hypnosis and getting more deeply involved in that. But something I noticed is that wasn't for me so much was breathing techniques. Now, they are supposed to be really good for a lot of people. I didn't really want to focus on my breathing. Because when I focused on it, it seemed to get worse. Now, that's just a personal experience of my own. So, what I do still do breathing techniques and talk about them as well. Because it seems a lot of people do prefer that... But I, I'm, I like to do stuff a little bit different, so it gives you uh, more options, perhaps. So this 
it can slow down your breathing. So, you know, if you're, let's say, we're hyperventilating, just breathing too much, and it feels, well, it just feels horrible, doesn't it? Going into an anxiety or panic attack. And instead of focusing on slowing down your breath, which is a, can, you know, really help depending on your mindset, depending on where you are, do that for me personally, because every situation is different. So what might be useful when I am at home might not have been as useful if I was sitting on a train or walking down a street or standing in a bookshop. You know, it's or maybe, or when I was with somebody eating a meal, it's different scenarios, different situations. Sometimes call for different techniques that may be more useful in that scenario. So this, as I said, is very, very, very simple. And it is, it is literally just counting down from 10 down to 1. And this is something that I've been doing for years and years and years and years myself. Now, I almost do it without realising I'm doing it. And I'm not going to pretend it's my technique because it probably isn't. It might just be something that I picked up along the way. But it's I'll pass it on. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think counting from 10 down to 1 possibly can't be owned by anyone because it's uh, lots of people have done it. I mean, I've been counting down from 10 down to 1 on my podcasts and my videos and hypnosis stuff since 2006. And it's a standard or oh, lovely plane in the background kind of a, a nice standard um, relaxing calming down part of a hypnosis script could be you know counting down from 10 down to 1 slowly uh, you know, walking down imagine walking down some steps or going down an escalator or maybe being in a, a lift or an elevator and it's going down Floors, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, you know, that, that kind of thing. Or counting the clouds in the sky. You know, just counting down from 10 to 1, or 20 to 1, or 20, 29. And just counting the clouds in your mind as they go past. Which is just, it is kind of another version of counting sheep, really. Because... In a way, clouds do look like sheep, but without legs and faces, and they can fly. Okay, they don't look like sheep, but you know what I mean, like fluffy and white. So, maybe in a child's mind, there's, you know, clouds like look like sheep. But they're not every every child's going to have seen a sheep, have they? Might have seen clouds, but they might not live on a on a you know in a place where sheep live. Which means I'm getting off the subject a bit, so it's not really relevant. Which is something that I do do. I like a bit of irrelevance. So this technique is counting down from ten to one which I've already said a few times. But it isn't counting down slowly. That's the obvious thing to do. Like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. The reason why I don't do it that way, although it can be done that way and it can work depending on the situation, is because that's inconsistent with how I'm feeling, potentially. So if I'm 
it's uh, I'm going through a stressful period, uh, feeling that everything's going a bit too fast. Uh, my heartbeat's going too fast. I'm breathing too fast. Perhaps that's how I, perhaps that's how it feels for me in that moment. And if I start going ten, nine, and um, it's 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 the opposite to how I'm feeling, which is it's the opposite. I do want to feel opposite to how I'm feeling, but I need to kind of. Uh, a smoother transition. It's almost out of sync with mis- with myself if I was to do that. So it's I forget what the right word is, but um, rapport, I guess. You know, have a rapport with yourself. You're at if you if you're really really stressed or if you're really relaxed. And someone says, I'll oh, count with me, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, like, no, I'm relaxed. You're counting too fast. Or they want to rush around, like, no, I don't want to rush around. You're going to be out of rapport with that person, out of sync. And being out of sync with yourself is probably worse. So to go and just say, oh, okay. 10, 9, like that, might not be useful. It might be useful, might be brilliant, but sometimes it might not be. So this is an option when you need something different, when you need to sort of get into rapport with yourself, get into sync, in sync with yourself. So start off at the speed that you're at already. Start where you are and then lead to where you want to go, where you want to be. But the good thing about it is you haven't got a lead because it happens naturally. This is something that happens naturally. So unless you've got a speedy voice and you can talk fast for hours on end, in which case this probably won't be for you. But if you're just a standard person who may be, I mean, most people probably speak quicker than me because I've got a fairly slow voice. I, I talk fairly slowly. Um, I would probably talk a bit slower when I make recordings than I do in, in real life, but I'm still not a super duper quick talker. And I think part of the reason, part of the part of the reason for that, is thinking about it is that when I lived in London, I was around a lot of people that English was their second language, and I wanted to communicate with them because I was maybe working with them all day long. Um, so I learned to speak slower. So instead of just talking fast and ignoring the fact that maybe they couldn't keep up, even though they were like listening in a different language, you know, I mean, I can only speak English. So I don't, I mean, it's amazing to be able to speak more than one language, I think is, is uh, like a superpower really, which I don't have. So I learned to try and communicate by maybe speaking a bit slower. But then I'm not, I, f- I go, I, I, I do have my periods, my moments when I, when I do talk very quickly. Uh, if I go a little bit manic sometimes, but generally I'm more in the slow side. And you might be wondering, you know, if you stop talking about yourself, Jason, should we get on with the recording? I said, okay, fair enough. I guess I'm just trying to explain that we're all different. And if so, I've got a friend who's very fast, I've got a couple of friends that they're basically Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, that's the character, like so fast. And this might not help them, but it might. 
you know, you never know. So, to start off, you just, you haven't got to say it out loud. You can say it out loud if you want. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But you start off fast. As fast as you can go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's about as fast as I can really go. The idea is you don't slur, you don't you don't mix the words like it's not ten nine and the like you know, it's you pronounce each number concisely so you can hear it. So even if it's in your mind or if you say it out loud, ten nine eight so ten nine eight seven six five four three two one like ten nine eight seven six five because it's easy to do it if you don't actually say the if you don't say the numbers c- correctly, ten of the ten of the one. Like, did you really say it? You know, like so say, say each number individually. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So do that as fast as you can, without slurring, without tripping over yourself, and then just start again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, it's very boring to do this. And it's it's not the most exciting thing in the world. And before you all start shouting, we know what boring means. I mean, it's something that... It is a distraction... Of, of of sorts, so you know you that you can say that's part of the reason why it works is because you're now focusing on something different from what you were focusing on before. So that that could be part of it. But what happens is, and you may find this as well. I found this is you start off fast you don't purposefully slow down so you don't like gradually slow down you can do that that is a way to do it that is one way to do it and it you kind of take control and it can feel quite nice because you're taking control but this way isn't doing it that way this way isn't doing it that way. That's a weird sentence. So this is doing it without any kind of attempt at control. It's just allowing your body and your mind to naturally do what it does, what naturally. So your body and your mind wants to feel relaxed. Not all the time, but in those moments when there's discomfort, you know, if, if there's physical pain, you want to, you want that pain to reduce, don't you? Generally, unless, you know, depending on the situation, but, you know, most people would want that to either go away or to reduce. With stress, there's certain types of stress that's really good, and if you're if you're in the middle of something, if you're climbing a mountain, you're going to want some stress to keep you going. You don't want to be all floppy and loose and rolling down a mountain like, you know, elastic band. You want to be, you know, raring to go. If you're, if you're running in a marathon, you want to be, I guess, all the hundred meter dash. You want to be up and on it. But in a situation where you really don't want to be feeling the way you're feeling or the way you were feeling before and you, I mean some people might find just listening to this recording is enough and something changes, you're like oh okay I went to listen for this technique but actually something's changed. And you can't put you. You know when so, you know when something just changes. 
Uh, I remember years ago, it's, a couple, it's happened a few times over my life, but I used to be absolutely terrified of uh, spiders. And then one day I wasn't. Because I realised that it wasn't my fear, it was my stepmum who was my stepmum for the age of from the age of seven to fifteen, sixteen. So she was a very important person in my life. So I looked to her to kind of especially at a very early age, at seven years old, I looked to her to make sense of the world, I guess. And she was the person that I spent most time with as an adult. Well, the most the adult I spent most time with when I was a kid. And she wasn't a fan of the old spiders, even little ones. And, you know, I'm living in a country in the UK where spiders are pretty much harmless. So there was no real danger or anything. But I... I took on her phobia. I took it on. And one day I realised that. That it wasn't mine. I actually had an image of her getting all excited. Well, not excited, but, you know, like standing on a table. Because there was a, a, a money spider, you know, a mile away. It's just like, oh, It's... You know, trying to trying to get to the dock so she could sail out to sea to get away from land. It's like, oh wow, that's not me. It's not my thing. It's her thing. And it changed. Got no issue with spiders anymore. Haven't done for decades. Don't care. when I got uh, Andre, my little ferret, that I had for five and a half years, the first time I touched a ferret, I was scared. I mean, I really, really was scared. Because my friend had one. And I was like terrified of this thing that was moving so fast and big sharp teeth and everything. And I would never have gone anywhere near it before then. And then I got Andre as a little baby. And he was the love of my life. So it's, it changes sometimes, I guess, education. Learning that something is not harmful. Something that is nice. You know, that kinds of... There's different ways of changing how we feel. But I quite like that instant change. Where we're not even sure why. It's like, oh, I feel different now. I feel different. You feel different. And he's like, why do you feel different? And it doesn't... It's like, there's no logic, but hey, do we, don't always need logic, I guess, do we? So the the good thing about this technique is your, when you count fast from 10 down to 1, clearly, and you say it clearly, either to yourself or externally, you get more of a sense if you say externally, because you can hear yourself saying it say it internally it's much easier to say it clearly clearer like 10 9 8 7 6 5 3 2 1 saying it out loud saying it internally it takes no effort because there's no i'm not physically doing anything so you can do either but i say if you can do it out out loud not loud but just you know verbally And after a few times of saying it, what happens is you naturally start to notice the movement of your lips, your vocal cords. You start to notice that in order to 
pronounce each number correctly, you start to slow down the way that you're saying them. So it's like it, just the counting slows down gradually. Not because you're making it slow down, not because you want it to slow down, because I guess a few reasons. First of all, it's boring to do it. Uh, secondly, you kind of, you start to lose interest. They're like, okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You know, after maybe you've done it 10, 20, 30 times, you might start like literally sort of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, because it's tedious. And you might notice you start taking deep breaths as you're doing it. Not because you're trying to calm down or relax. Because you're sighing. Because it's boring. I mean, I don't have to say the word it's repetitive because obviously it's repetitive. And you just keep doing it. And you can you can spend 90% of your attention on the numbers. And you can have 10% of your attention on how you feel. Maybe start off with just 5%. Maybe just 1% on how you feel. And then as you start to slow down with the numbers naturally starting to slow down as you say them out loud you notice maybe that your attention increases on how you're feeling decreases on the numbers so maybe you start to have 5, 10, 15, 20% of your attention on how you're feeling because it's very hard to focus on something like counting from 10 down to 1 to give and really giving all your attention to it because it is so it's, it feels so pointless boy you notice as you're focusing more and more on how you're feeling is that you are feeling different you are feeling more relaxed Armor. Your mind has slowed down. Maybe it was it, you felt that you had a your mind was very active, overactive. Maybe too many thoughts, but now not really much going on. My brain's kind of in that permanent situation. My mind is not there's not a lot going on in my mind a lot of the time. And everything slows down. And it feels good. And you can just keep doing this. Until you don't need to do it anymore. Just one of those things that you can test for yourself. And it can work in different ways, benefit you for different reasons. And maybe you just feel more relaxed having listened to me spending the last, I don't know how long, nearly half an hour. So I spent about half an hour talking about counting down from 10 to 1. So maybe you feel more relaxed now. So please let me, go, let me know how you get on. Remember to be kind to yourself. 
because she deserved to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Now my stomach's gurgling. Hmm. I think I might need to have another biscuit. Bye.